Hey, welcome back. This time I'm going to be discussing combat with boats um, in D&D. &D. Um, out of all the editions I've played, uh, some basic, first, second, and fifth, I've never actually played a full combat with boats. And in this uh, campaign, that this first edition campaign that I'm running, the uh, PCs have escaped this island and they managed to do so on a boat that they found in this tomb. Now this boat isn't the greatest of shape, the sails are, are, are all rotten and stuff, but the boat itself was in pretty good condition, um, being kept as it was. Uh, it's got oars, so they're able to, to row on it, and they're going to encounter a couple of um, encounters right on the sea. One of them will likely lead to combat. Now, first edition um, D and D actually has a pretty good rules for water combat. It starts back on page fifty three and goes through pages fifty four and fifty five. I'm going to put these boats here out of my way a little bit so I can get this in here. Do the magic zoom in. And uh, so we get to see here on page 53, it starts to talk about the various boats, the rowboat. Now, rowboat's pretty small. It's got a tiny little crew. Um, and it's not going to uh, be great in, in combat. It's, of course, more designed to get you from place to place. Barges and rafts, once again, they're not great and going to be great in combat, a little bit better. Um, but basically, they are designed to move loads around, not so much to conduct combat. Um, a galley is a uh, long slim oared ship. So, so, some of the earlier types of galleys are the Gr Greek and Roman uh, biremes, triremes, and quadremes. You ever played Civilization? Uh, Sid Meier's Civilization game on the computer. You're certainly familiar with the little trireme or that early ships you get there. But but they have banks of oars and uh, the uh, D, AD&D &D version would be the Drakkar or the Viking Dragon Ship, um, which would be the square sail. Now, of course, like I said, the uh, ship that my, that my players got a hold of doesn't have that sail. Other versions of ships would be the merchant ship and then actual warships, um, which would be like the ultimate naval ship. Uh, but um, we won't be running into any of those in the combat today. Uh, but that would be another ship that would be found with the rules for it in D&D. That's the first edition, of course. So, on page 54, it goes right into hull values. So, a rowboat, for example, could have one to four hit points, a small barge, one to six, a large, two to eight. And then finally, what we're interested in here is a small galley is two to 12, um, because uh, that's what they're going to have as a small is a small galley. And their opponent's going to also have a small galley, just to keep things simple, um, just to keep things a little interesting, because like I said, they're not going to have the sail, so they're gonna be, not going to be as fast, perhaps. As their opponents. Um, merchant ships can get uh, pretty good there. Can, the merchant sh or a large merchant ship could actually have more hit points than a uh, warship um, in the little table here. Talks about repairing damage. Um, if you get uh, anytime damage reaches one third to one half of a ship's hull value, repairs can be made at sea. However, if it's more than half damaged, the ship has to be put into port. So they can't, uh, so if they get some damage and they're out to sea and this end of this combat, and they're like, yay, our ship's still floating. They're gonna need to find a port or the ship's gonna sink anyway. Um, like I said, they're with a rowboat, that one to four hit points on a rowboat, that rowboat can be sunk with an arrow probably. Uh, length and width. Uh, we're looking at the small uh, galley, so it's going to be 30 to 60 feet wide and 8 to 15 feet long. And we're going to go like a, sl a, a slender, long ship. 
crew. You can have uh, expert hirelings can be your crew. Uh, we're not uh, too worried about their crew because it's going to be them. And then the other ship, it's going to be uh, their opponents. And their opponents are just going to have kind of a generic crew just to kind of get us going. Uh, wind direction and force. This is this is good to know. Uh, you can roll the D8 or you can pick what the direction the wind's coming from. Unless it's a really weird uh, storm or something, you're probably going to have you know one wind direction for the entire dur duration of the combat. Same way with the force, you're going to have the same force for the same for the entire duration of of the combat. And so that can be calm, light breeze, moderate breeze, strong breeze, strong gale, storm, hurricane. I mean, I would just pick. In this case, it's going to be a maybe a light to moderate breeze, somewhere in that 7 to 8 mile an hour. It's not really going to have a uh, major impact on the combat. Um, so any wind of strong gale force or better will have a percentage chance to do damage to the ship. So if you get up to here, to the... Uh, um, strong gale, which is above the strong breeze, so at 32 miles an hour, you can actually get wind damage. So that could be interesting with combat. You could, you know, be fighting, trying not to get wind damage, or hoping you don't get wind damage, as you really couldn't do much to pre to prevent its um, rules as uh, ri written anyway. But some of the things that could happen would be capsizing, break a mast, break a beam, uh, tear a sail, uh, have a man go overboard, uh, which that man happens to be wearing uh, metal armor um, could have caused them to drown. Um, exhaustion. Exhaustion will occur after the crew has rowed at their normal speed for 8 to 10 hours um, uh, in the galley. So, or at max speed for 30 minutes. So that, that may be, you know, come into play, especially if their boat gets heavily damaged, looking for a port trying to get there before the galley sinks. So that could all, all kind of come into play here. Movement from a standstill, uh, that's to kind of get it going. So if they get stopped, perhaps they try ramming the other ship. Um, or they're just sitting there for some reason when the other ship comes along and they want to get going. It's going to take them three rounds to get that uh, galley moving at a, uh, to a, up to a normal speed. And the speed that can go is right here on the next table for a small galley. Normal speed would be 6 miles an hour, max 9. Uh, and then for the oar, which is what they're actually going to have is the oar. They're not, gonna have, not going to have a sail, more than likely. Um, 5 or, and 8. Um, I say more than likely because if they got super clever, maybe, maybe they can come up with a sail. But I really don't see how because I'm not providing them with one. Um, should something catch on fire, we have rules for fire damage. I don't really intend to have that come into play, but that would just be at flaming arrows or catapults or somebody threw a fireball. Definitely a, beyond their first level abilities, and I'm not going to have the uh, bad guys have those either. At least not for this um, first time ever running... Uh, Shipborne combat here in D and D, and like I said, I've never actually played it either, or seen it um, really played. So um, I did find some interesting rules online. There's kind of people that kind of streamlined it. Thought about doing those, but I think I'm going to stick with the rules as written at least the first time out, and then you know we can make 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 changes later. Um, light damage, almost no damage requires no immediate attention. Um, when the ship has sustained three or more light damage, it's considered to be a move that light to a uh, moderate damage. And this we're talking about fire damage here. Uh, light to moderate, moderate, heavy, and that's all with the fire damage. Eventually your ship will burn up if you were to be, you know, if you were using the uh, fire rules, which could be fun at a later time. And even gives you the length of time it might take to burn that ship down to the waterline. The rowboat, boom, it's it's just burned. The uh, a merchant ship might take a few turns. But uh, sinister secret of of salt marsh, should we ever played through that? One of the options in there is you could burn the ship, 
that you find and it burns pretty quick um, and you get nothing. So yeah, a great option there. Um, ramming. Uh, so these are some of the things or the, the, the two major attacks that you can do. You can ram and when you ram, you have to come in at a 60 to 90 degree angle and then the ramming ship must backwater back up immediately or risk sinking with the ship it rammed or being boarded by the crew. Um, that uh, So uh, just looking at it here, we have our ship here. Uh, say our heroes are in the, the, uh, the top ship up here. Let's just kind of come back here a little bit. Heroes are in the top ship ship here comes in and rams bam all right this ship here now must immediately start backing up or if this ship had enough damage it could sink and take this ship with it or the, the people in this ship could then uh, board on this ship without having to grapple first which takes us to the next attack is grappling is done when the men of one ship by means of a grapple or rope Secure their craft to another ship. 25% um, chance that the men aboard the grappled ship will be able to successfully sever the line or remove the grapple. So you throw a grapple, 25% chance that uh, even if your grapple was successful, that they're going to be able to cut it. If the attempt to remove the grapple fails, the ship may find herself boarded by the men of the other ship. If both ships are the same type, two galleys... There are no bonuses for melee. However, if the crew of a galley is trying to board a merchant or warship, the latter attacks with a plus one, while the former gets a minus one. So there's a size difference going on there. And the reason for that is the men aboard the merchant or warship have advantage of height and are fighting down at the men on the galley. When this happens, the men in the galley usually outnumber the men on the higher ship by as much as three to one in some cases. Uh, this applies to all ships that are built with two or more decks. All right. So, um, and they go into melee, human-like versus human-like. So, uh, Sawhagen or um, Buccaneers, Pirates, all of the uh, Nixies, Aquatic Elves, Tritons. Um, actually, the human-like creatures such as Nixies, Aquatic Elves, Tritons, and Sea Hugs, and Mermen will not or cannot try to board. Um, but like I said, the other stuff, the Sahagan and the Laced On, the Ghouls, Gargoyles, Hobgoblins, uh, Pirates will all try to, to uh, board. And then humans uh, versus non-humans. Uh, the men on a ship will be at a disadvantage fighting monsters in the water. A squid will try to circle the ship with his tentacles and sink it. Other sea monsters may be just as dangerous. Um, sinking a ship. There are several ways to sink a ship, so that's something that you can do. Uh, you can ram the ship. Let me get a little bit zoomed in again. Ram that ship, and uh, and then you know it could take a, a while for that ship to sink. Um, they could burn the ship, of course. Uh, they could have maybe have siege engines on the merchant ship or or, or warship. Um, they can capture a ship. They can try to capture it if uh, the crew aboard one ship have died, surrendered, or are helpless and unable to fight, um, trap below decks or something. And then uh, you can see if if a surrender will take place. And then here's an important, important thing right here. Swimming in metal armor will be impossible, with the exception of magic. Any character wearing magic armor will be encumbered, and the only stroke possible will be the dog paddle. It is possible to swim in leather and padded, but it is awkward, and there's a 5% chance of drowning per hour. All heavy possessions must be discarded, or the chance of drowning increases 2% for every five rounds in the character. And this includes weapons, <clears throat> except you can uh, basically, you can put a dagger in your mouth. Now, um, this reminds me of one of my first characters I had. He uh, fell into this uh, um, underground in this dungeon. There was this uh, 
cavern of water fell in there and I couldn't think of what to possibly do so he drowned so very sad for whatever his name was he wasn't the one that was eaten by the frog it was a different one and then uh anyway it goes on to some general um terminology so you can you know make it more um, exciting you can you know aft corvus uh devil devil to pay um four forecastle or forcel something like that i can't say that correctly i'm not even gonna really uh try that again hoist sails lower the sails port shearing off oars starboard step stern stern castle i'm sure it's got a fun name too that i don't have never even heard stroke top castle on step way anchor and all the definitions are there, so you can, you know, kind of throw in, sprinkle in some of those naval words to kind of add to the uh, immersion, if you will. And the rules actually do go on to underwater. Um, so if you needed it, uh, breathing underwater, movement underwater, combat underwater. So it's all kind of right there, vision underwater. So if you're combat, say that squid pulls somebody underneath. Um, you would have to maybe move them to the underwater combat section to see what, you know, what they're doing there. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, with this campaign, this first, uh, first edition campaign. It's going along great. Um, had, uh, players, they made it all the way through their first island. Um, they are trying to take this merchant's daughter back home to her, to the island that she belongs on. And of course, along the way, they are going to meet a couple of other vessels, and we're going to see what happens. Maybe they don't make it there at all. Maybe they get sunk. They get sunk and they drown. I guess then we start new characters or something. So this is uh, <clears throat> no real plan to make this to go into easy mode or anything. So I'm going to kind of keep it with a little bit of a I don't know hard hard mode but not like i'm not out to kill the character the uh yeah the characters but i'm not out to make it easy for them either so kind of in summary uh 53 54 55 have the um water the the naval combat rules and the uh first edition dungeon master's guide and i did notice too the the um osric i mentioned before they were kind of using that for some of the newer players so they can kind of familiarize themselves and it's a little bit easier osric i couldn't find any rules for naval combat in there either i just wasn't looking in the right spot or they don't exist and i'm kind of inclined to say they don't exist so um but yeah these are really really clean really well written um pretty pretty evident what to do um I said I did also find some more streamlined rules online. Um, just did a search for D and D naval combat and came up with uh, came up with some more streamlined rules. But I think I would just kind of want to stick with the uh, with the rules here at least for now and see how those work out. All right. Well, thank you for listening and talk to you later. Bye.